Well, Nippert Stadium, we've talked about it. It was closed a year ago. The Bearcats had to move. Finally back uh, open this year. Scott, tell us a little bit more about the renovations here at Nippert Stadium. Well, it is the same old Nippert, except for once you get inside and you start to look around at the press box and the private suites and the low seating areas that have been created here at this wonderful historic facility. They've increased the capacity by about 5,000. The renovation started back in December of 2013, so the Bearcats football team had to move and play over at Paul Brown Stadium on the river while this construction was taking place. But the press box is brand new, and Todd, you and I had a chance to take a little tour of it earlier. It is fantastic. The tour was because we didn't know where we were going. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> Scott? Thanks, guys. Just a couple of things to take note of. We've seen a handful of players come up with cramps tonight, probably because it was so warm earlier this afternoon. Happens a lot early in the season. But the other thing that's happening is we're getting a lot of divots out there. Here's some of the uh, field. Richard, you mentioned earlier that the grass is a little longer than maybe we're accustomed to seeing at most of the high school venues. Well, there are plenty of pretty substantial divots being created out on that playing surface right now, so you got to be careful you don't turn an ankle. I think that was my wedge about 17 a couple weeks ago, turn that divot in. At the Coliseum, the Redskins of Port Clinton, just their second playoff appearance. Familiar face on the other side in that matchup as Bishop Hartley, the number one seed, Scotty. Yeah, no question. Port Clinton's first playoff appearance in school history came last year. Now they're trying to get their first postseason victory, but their opponent, Bishop Hartley, they've been in it a bunch. It's their 14th time in the dance, two state championships, most recently in 2010. For the Redskins of Port Clinton, they almost did not get back to week 11 because of back-to-back -back losses to Clyde and Edison in weeks eight and nine, but there was a lot of buzz about their offense coming into the year, and that group has really stepped up. They're now scoring 34 points per game, so they'll make that trek down from about 40 miles east of Toledo to Columbus, and the Hawks will be waiting. Head coach Brad Birchfield's team gets the number one seed, even though they have three losses, but when you see their schedule, you know why. They lost to DeSales, Beaver Creek, and then out of Indiana, Hamilton Southeastern. Those three teams combined to go 24 and 6. Their big wins, they beat Toledo Central Catholic who finished 8 and 2, wins over Marion Franklin, Bishop Watterson, and Bishop Reedy. The Hawks finished in the Associated Press poll ranked 11th in Division 4. So that's the 1 versus 8 matchup in region number 12. Should be a good one. Looking forward to it. All right, thanks, Tim. Coach, you told us this week you wanted to establish the ground game early. You did that on the first drive and then opened things up through the passing game. How important has it been to be able to show that balance? I think it's huge. I think they're, they're a very big um, football team. You know, they're, 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 they're tough guys. And to be able to uh, establish the run is critical for us. On the defensive side of things, that's a Glenn Esty offense that can explode. But you guys have kept them in check. What's allowed you to do that? Well, I think we're, we're winning the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, with, with this team, and, and Robbie Boone is such a terrific back, and, and Kyle Pelcher is such a terrific quarterback, that to, to be able to, you know, establish the line of scrimmage is huge. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you.